You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So, sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are here in the studio smoking a few different cigars here that we're going to talk about from United Cigars. This is going to be a part two, a little update on some different cigars uh, new stuff that you see that you will see here on our channel, and then some stuff that's also new to the market. But without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce our guest. You may recognize him from before. Oliver is back. Oliver from United Cigars. Good to see you, my friend. Bigger, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Always. You better be. All right. So first things first. What are you smoking for this episode? I'm smoking the United uh, Connecticut that just landed. Uh, we released it at this year's PCA. Uh, so we, we just came across really, I mean, this year we came across some, what, what I consider some really nice uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut uh, shade wrapper. And we used it on the firecracker Connecticut that we released uh, in January. And then, um, you know, during that, during that whole period, um, of finding this, you know, this tobacco, I wanted to start using it on on some other blends, and I thought United could use a Connecticut, so that just came in, like I said, and uh, that's in the Robusto, Toro, and Churchill size. So it's uh, it's it's smoking great. I mean, they just landed uh, and just started shipping, so I wanted to grab grab a few and try them out. Absolutely, again. we have Jared is also smoking the United Connecticut today. So he's going to be enjoying that. And then Mark and I are, well, I'm going to smoke the Abuelo. Mark is going to smoke the Red Anchor, the famous Red Anchor that we all know and love. Hmm. And the Red Anchor, we just got the ashtray that landed. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been, uh, that's just been helping, helping sales, just a nice little promo, and it's, uh, it's a nice display piece. It's a very beautiful piece for sure. And um, so the Abuelo, this is my second time smoking it but i believe there's a different uh blend as well correct on abuelo there was the original abuelo that was out uh and it had been out because we've had that that name for a long time um so that was just a reblend uh rebranding and relaunch uh, mm. a few years ago and on this this particular blend we started working with uh jre so working with uh, Justo Oro mm. on on that, and uh, that's got Corojo filler binder and um, Honduran wrapper. So it's a nice, uh, nice, nice project out of that out of that factory for sure. Definitely, yeah, it's a very good cigar so far. I had one in the, I believe it's like a small torpedo size. That one was excellent. The the Nieta, yes, that's like a perfecto, yeah, perfecto, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's got a, um, it's got a nice little. There's like this little pepperiness, um, but a little little sweetness. So it's you know some, you could say it's like a, a cedar sweetness or, or cinnamon. But it's I think it's a it's got a great profile on it. It does for sure. We were talking about this before we started. Um, you know some of your travels and stuff. Are you still handling basically the Northeast or have you expanded at all? Tell us about that. So as far as uh, you, you know my my day to day with United cigars. When I started, uh, with the company in 2016, I was, I was all across the U S so we had, you know, just a, a few accounts. We were still, you know, very, very young company. Um, it started in 2009, but United cigars as a, as a whole, um, United cigars started in 1901 and kind of dissolved. And then we took it, uh, took it over in 19, uh, not 19 in 2009. And um, so, yeah, there were, there were just uh, a few accounts. It was small. There wasn't anybody traveling with it. Um, United Cigars would be represented at the PCA once a year. And that was it. So I started in 2016 and just started traveling the U.S. 
Uh, so I'd go coast to coast and really just focus on the the accounts that we had and the territories that maybe had you know a, a few accounts to show really show representation, show that there was you know somebody behind the company, and then that turned into um, you know picking up more territories as, as brands started to kind of gain a little bit of traction. Um, and our, our portfolio is really pretty extensive. We have uh, 25 different lines in the portfolio, some that we manufacture and some that we distribute. So when I started, um, it was, it, 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 the challenge was trying to figure out something that was going to stick, right? Because you, especially on social media, mm -hmm. it was, how do I, how do I post something on social media and then post, you know, the next day or, you know, later on that day, another product and then another product. By the time, if I did two a day, right, by, by the time I'm done, that's, um, you know, almost almost two weeks uh, have gone by, and now i got to go back to the beginning. So, you know, everyone's got short attention spans, and um, I was like, I can't focus on the entire portfolio, so that's where I, I put the focus on on Atabay, hmm. uh, because I said that's our most expensive line in the uh, in the portfolio, so let me focus there. So, so. As you know, and I say that because as things started to gain traction and we started to kind of sink our teeth into, uh, you know, the different territories, we needed to add um, a sales team uh, and really just, you know, it, it, they're, they're independent sales reps. Um, so we just as as those markets grew, I couldn't, you know, personally cover the entire U.S. Mm. So we had somebody that that came on and, and just focused on a territory, which allowed me to kind of focus on other territories and then also help them. And um, and then th that's now expanded. We have five, you know, five representatives uh, tackling different territories. And we are mostly now focused on on the east as far as having representation on the ground. And then I'll, I'll still focus on, you know, the, the west uh, as much as I can. But, you know, I say that and then. As we're talking, uh, I think it was right before the show. I said uh, I'm in, I'm in New York, uh, New Jersey, uh, not next week, but the week after, and then I'm in uh, Louisiana, uh, the week after that, and then uh, Illinois. So those are still territories that are covered by our representatives, but um, I still have to visit with them, travel with them, and uh, you know we do different events. So I oversee the operations for United Cigars. So that's that's anything and everything. Um, you know, head down to the factories. Uh, when I can, I'll visit uh, visit accounts and visit different territories, and then work on the the blends, the packaging, uh, our marketing plan, everything. Just <laughs> if I got to clean up the kitchen, I got to clean up the kitchen. Yeah, so it's <laughs> safe to say that uh, you're definitely still got your hands full. Still, still have our hands full, uh, for sure. And we have uh, you know, we have, we have a great team that um, you know it's it's always hard with any industry when you start jumping into a sales force that is is shared you know if, if if we'll call it that so um but it's it's a slippery slope but i'm lucky that um you know they're they're receptive um they they believe in the product uh and and so you can see that the you know the focus is 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 on is our our line not only our line but you know the other lines that they represent but we have a good strong team they you know they're they're able to really get out there creating events and creating uh you know new new traffic and new uh new accounts out there so i i, I got some support now more so than mm. uh, more so than before so it's it's good yeah and i don't know who um your rep is that's in florida <laughs> mainly but i know that we went to one of the cigar lounges that uh we were prospecting and we walked in and they've got the the atabay humidor laid out right there on the bar so he was just there right wow. before us uh, and they were taking pictures and stuff with it. So this is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the London house in uh, Sand Lake, but they just picked up the Atabays, that whole humidor and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's uh, London house and it's called the drawing room. Right. The drawing yeah. room yeah. is the room, yeah. humidor. Yeah. 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 So that humidor came out. Uh, that was Nelson Alfonso's creation. Uh, the man behind Selected Tobacco, which is Atabay, Buyer, and Bandolero. Uh, the Alfonso Añejo Grand Selection, and then the Byron 1850. So that was his creation. He's uh, he, he has such an amazing, um, you know, creative mind mm -hmm. that he'll present things to us that are uh, it's just, it's just it's it's a it's a concept. Uh, it's a 3D imaging, and it looks so real. And uh, and then we see it 
you know, for, you know, in, in front of us and it, it still blows us away every, every single time. So that humidor is very unique. Uh, only 250 humidors were made. Um, there are inside the humidor, there are all, it's a, it's, a, it's the entire database selection. So you have all 12 Vitolos, but only five of each. Mm. And then it comes with a backup uh, refill, but you know, the two drawers on the side, the front drawer, the top, it's, uh, it's, it's incredibly unique to the market. So we released 50, I think, last year, and then another 50 this year. Uh, so it'll just be spread out over time. Because with, with Atabay in, in particular, and, and most of the selected tobacco lines, um, Nelson didn't plan on making the humidor when the cigars were made. So we have to pull, or he has to pull the inventory that's been aging for five years out and then put it into the humidor. Mm. So we can't release the 250 humidors right away. So it's just over time. We'll release the 50 and 50. So those um, those came out this year. We sold them at the at the PCA. We had 50 available, and those are all out on the uh, on the market now. Very nice. And I will say too, uh, speaking of Atabe, Jared and I had the privilege of enjoying the Black Ritos. Uh, oh. The day it hit cigars on the Ave, we just happened to mm. walk in. And he had him sitting out there, and I was like, well, I guess it's fate telling me that I have to smoke it, so I guess uh, that's what we're going to do. And I'll tell you what, that was a phenomenal cigar. Absolutely phenomenal. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty special, and I don't think, I mean, we have you know, a lot of great uh, you know, retailers that, that do carry it, but uh, I don't think you could smoke it with a better person than Don Patel over at Cigars. Oh, of course, yeah. He's, he's a special character. He definitely is, yeah. So we both lit one up, and we were chatting about it. He had nothing but great things to say about it, too, of course. Um, just a very unique cigar, too. I mean, the flavor I was picking off it was uh, very interesting. Some, like, uh, unique fruity notes, maybe, like, some blueberries or something kind of on those lines. But mm. just, a, just a very unique cigar. And, you know, I highly recommend people, if they get a chance, to definitely try and find that. I know it's very limited in places that you can find it, but it's definitely worth the try. Yeah, so that that you know, you say blueberry and blueberry comes up quite a bit, um, and like cherry notes and these these mm -hmm. you know rich fruits and there's there there are certain tobaccos or there you know we think it's the the Peruvian ligero that is used, and it, it with that aging and with the different cedars it it, it just creates this rich berry nose. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can kind of, you can taste the berry, berry flavors on the drawing, you know, when you're smoking it, but sometimes when you open up a box or you open up, you know, what used to be the jars, um, it, it, it was just like a blast in the face of, of blueberry, which was a big, a big note. And the first time I, I kind of picked up on that was with the Byron, a peak poemas. Hmm. Um, I felt like they just had this incredible, um, very distinct blueberry note, note to them. But, uh, but yeah, that kind of goes away. I don't even want to say it goes away because I think when you when you light it, I don't really taste the blueberry as as like a flavor, mm -hmm. but uh, but I definitely taste some rich you know rich um, fruity notes for sure. Yeah, definitely like on the retro hill, like you said, uh, you can get either that cherry or basically like a dark fruit note. Um, and I think um, a lot of the cigars that uh, Alfonso has released have those similar fruity kind of notes on a lot of the cigars kind of like it might be the Peruvian tobacco. Um, but even like the original Alfonso, that's more of a lighter cherry or something like that. It has these unique mm. fruity notes on it. And I think that's what makes that line of cigars, uh, very unique. And just overall, it's an excellent smooth experience when you're smoking anything that's out of Bay or Alfonso. Um, that's just kind of like what I associate with, that line of cigars specifically. Yeah, well, well Nelson, um, with his aging process, is unique to the industry. Um, right. I mean, he he takes his time with the cigars. There is, and there, you know, there, obviously there there are manufacturers that will rest the cigars in in you know perfect humidity and perfect temperature, and they're in you know cedar cedar rooms. But you know, Nelson takes it to a different level. Um, by aging the cigars in in the first room, they go through like a first fumigation, uh, is what he calls it. But it's not not using any chemicals. But he said it's like a, you know this cleansing process for that first year. Um, it's already you know the tobacco's already aged uh, five to seven years prior, 
and um, you know they go through the the extra fermentation he wants to remove all the ammonias but after they're rolled they go into that first stage of aging uh, and the, even that room is lined with five different cedars he uses Cuban Spanish Mexican Brazilian and Lebanese cedars hmm. and they'll sit in this room but he'll bring humidity down and then back up so the cigar is actually purging any other impurities that are in the cigar after it's rolled and then after that first year he said he walks into the room and he can smell it, that it's ready to transfer to the next aging room. and the next aging room still has the you know, the five different cedars again and they still go through that that process and that that's always the key i always try to start process is is very different from just aging mm. right you put a cigar in a humidor you close it you open it back up in five years it's it's five years old but this goes through an aging process for five years the Atabe Black, uh, the Alfonso Añejo, the Alfonso Grand Selection, and the Byron 1850 all went into separate rooms from the Atabe, Byron, and Bandolero. Mm. Those rooms started to use French oak. So he used a little bit of French oak uh, in those rooms and still went through the same aging process. So the Atabe Black was in that aging room with the Alfonso and Byron mm. 1850. But uh, yeah, that that wrapper is pretty. Everything's pretty special about that that cigar. It's, it hits me every time. Definitely, yeah. And because of this unique process too, it's definitely hard for anyone else to replicate that. Uh, hence, again, adding to the uniqueness of these cigars. Um, you know, for anyone to replicate that would be a chore for sure. Especially with how old the tobacco is, you have to definitely have, you know, years of planning and years of putting it together. Just to get yeah, to one investment. cigar, yeah. You know, a lot, you know, a lot of companies, and you know, even on the United side, this, you know, our our United Connecticut, we just we just released it. It's been a, a project, you know, for well over, well over a year of just trying to, you know, figure out how how we're gonna, um, you know, create this blend. And then we came across the, you know, as I said, the Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, and then we put it into motion, and it, it rests for a little bit, but it's not it's not five anywhere close to five years. Mm -hmm. You know, right. we're, we're, we're letting this sit for a few months, but the investment and the time and, you know, the, the patience to have an inventory like this and sit on it. Yeah, no, I, I can't say no one else will do it, but, um, you know, he, he has a couple other secrets that he just you know doesn't share with the, the process. But uh, even even the process of, of just having a cigar sit for five years, not getting into market, not to recoup your costs. That's a big, um, you know, that's a, a that's a big investment. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And so besides the United Connecticut, which you said you released that PCA, were there other new items that were released as well on PCA? Yeah. So PCA, this was a big, uh, big release year uh, for us. You know, we, we try to stay, you know, within the portfolio now because we, you know, as we were growing, we were adding, adding things, but uh, we, we, ex we kind of expanded, um, I guess the the footprint of certain lines like the United we had the Habano which was the the natural before and the Maduro and then we added the the Connecticut same with Firecracker we had the Maduro the Habano and then now the Connecticut and then we released the uh actually got the I was gonna light up but we got time the La Giana 30th uh anniversary mm -hmm. and this one this one was special yeah. as well I mean it, everything's special right that, that people come out with because there's there's a lot of time that goes into them but um excuse me the La Giana 30th um you know we make that in in honduras uh at the at the camacho factory and um it, it's the the quality control is always fantastic with our, our la giana line we have the natural maduro and then we have our angelic uh which is a sweet tip line so for the 30th anniversary um we were trying to you know figure out something that could um kind of capture the the line without um you know, taken away from it, uh, from the La Giana line. So, um, the, the blend inside the filler was elevated just a little bit. Uh, I wanted, wanted to have a little more, a little more power, mm -hmm. uh, to it, I guess a little more strength. So it's more medium plus. Uh, but then we, we use the, the natural and Maduro, uh, wrappers, um, around this cigar to kind of give it, you know, that, that barber pole, that classic barber pole, uh, look to it and then just changed up the, the band and you have the 30th anniversary secondary band. So it's the two, yeah, two rappers dancing together to celebrate uh, 30 years of, of La Giana uh, on the market, which is, yeah, we're, we're proud of. It's it's not easy to create a line and then to have a line 
uh, you know, on the market for, for that amount of time, you know, we're, we're pretty proud of. And then um, another special project was our, our gold star that we made at the William Ventura, uh, tobacco letter William Ventura. So sitting down with, with the father, William and, and, uh, and Weaver, we did the gold star um, and we released the limited edition first. 210 boxes were created um, because we wanted we wanted something special uh, on this. Uh, so, you know, Gold Star was something that had been created in the 90s um, and originally launched. But uh, you know, during the FDA, we we're trying to figure out what what lines do we keep, which ones meet predicate, which ones don't, uh, and then if you had had a line that was on the market, had the name. Uh, but you know, maybe stopped. You could use it for something else. It was you know very complicated, and um, we decided that Gold Star was just a, a brand that you know could stand on its own as a Gold Star. Mm. You could do nothing else on the on the cigar, and people would recognize that you know that symbol. So Gold Star just kind of meant something, and then it just kind of worked out timing wise. Well, we had. Uh, a good friend in in New Hampshire that has a has a gun range and has a, a foundation called uh, Swim with a Mission to uh, help veterans and uh, and he has his gun range and he came in he's a cigar smoker and we were talking he wanted to do you know something to uh, to help raise money and to to work with you know with the vets and so when I say timing was perfect I was working on the the packaging and the the blend for this so we said look here's Gold Star. This is what we wanted to do. We could do a limited release with you guys, and but we want it to, you know, mean something as well. So Gold Star, in the end, uh, we're working with Swim with a Mission and uh, the Navy Seal Museum, but we are donating 25 boxes out of only 210 boxes made. The first 25 are donated back to the Gold, Navy Seal Gold Star families. So they're able to raise money for the families. Obviously, they, you know, I mean, they made the the ultimate uh, sacrifice. So if we can you know, yeah. help support them, you know, we will. Um, and so with that, uh, you know, the family and the foundation should be able to raise a minimum of ten thousand dollars. But uh, we'll have some Navy SEALs sign the sign the boxes, and they'll go to auction. So hopefully, they can raise a little bit more. And um, that's that's a, a very very special project uh, for us. So. Those uh, those just landed and they started shipping out to retailers uh, now. So uh, hopefully we'll we'll get some events going for the uh, charitable auctions. Absolutely, it's great too seeing you know all these different brands have some sort of way to give back to the community, whether it's uh, the military veterans or whether it's to um, the environment stuff like that. A lot of this, uh, a lot of these movements of giving back are being uh, highlighted more in the cigar industry which I think is great for the industry overall uh, to show people that, you know, this isn't just uh, a money grabber. A lot of these companies are, you know, doing some good with the funds that they're raising. Like I said, whether it's the military or et cetera. So that's great. I also like uh, the new band for the uh, La Giana. I like that it's more centered on the gold for this particular mm -hmm. release. Uh, it's a very beautiful band. And the... Yeah, thank you. Barber Pole, of course, is uh, pretty unique. You don't see a lot of brands pushing out a Barber Pole. Um, there's definitely a lot of Barber Poles out there, but I think it might be making more of a comeback now. More people are doing it, uh, but definitely still not as common when it comes to all the other cigars that you can find. Right, right. Yeah, well, it was, yeah. Again, looking at, like, how, how are we going to blend this? What are we going to do for, for La Giana 30th? And that's where... You know, for me, I just didn't want to make it something that was going to. Obviously, I wanted to stand out and be be unique and different, but I don't want to reblend it so it's completely different from the line. Mm -hmm. I want to have somebody smoke the La Giana 30th, so they have an understanding of what La Giana is, and then they'll want to experience the natural. They'll want to experience the Maduro, and and then see if you know, see if the Barber Bowl kind of you know matches and it's a it's a good marriage of the two. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, that was the decision on the on the barber pole, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been doing well. You know, very very happy with it. It very smokes nice. great. That's it. you guys get one? No, we okay. got we didn't get one of those. It. No, we got um, outside of the ones we're smoking. I know that we got uh, the Bandolero sixty, which uh, I had the other day, and I thought it was absolutely excellent. Mm. The draw was great, um, and I'm not a big. Uh, 
like I don't like big ring gauges often, but that one smoked beautifully. Right. The draw wasn't you know too hard or anything like that, um, and the flavor on that was very nutty and very earthy, uh, which yeah. I enjoyed quite a lot. We also got um, some of the firecrackers, and um, I think that might be it. So I think it was five different ones total that we are uh, privileged yeah. to experience. Uh, different ones that we got last time, which is cool. We we're able to showcase a few different cigars on the podcast and then our page and stuff. So we'll be talking more about those, you know, on social media yeah. as well. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, when you when you look at that, it's you know that's just a, a sampling of what the portfolio is. It's it's so extensive, and you know, our our range not only in flavor profile but in pricing is the mm-hmm. same. So we have we have something for for everybody. Um, we have a we have a cigar in the right budget for for retailers and consumers, and uh, and 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 it has the right flavor profile. You can find something that's uh, that's going to meet, you know, your time of day. You guys did a did a show on the morning morning cigars. Yes. So, yep. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you could do it. You could smoke the even that firecracker. It's not. I think it's a good introduction to like what firecracker is, but that you know that there's a slight pepperiness to it, but it's almost like putting pepper on your on your eggs. Or it's also on your eggs, right? It's mm-hmm. not overpowering. It just kind of complements it. So that's a good morning cigar. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you bring a, a great point about how extensive um, the United collection is. Because, I mean, there's, I think we kind of talked about this last time, too. There's plenty of cigars you might pass in the humidor and not realize uh, is produced by United because the right. portfolio is just so extensive. And yeah, like you said, anywhere from, you know, under $10 to, um, stuff that's you know, well over fifty dollars even, but oh, ev- yeah. and then everything in between. I mean, there's there's like you said, you said it perfectly. There's something for everyone, and then, you know, the different wrappers, the different strengths. Um, the only problem is it's just so hard to choose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. On top of our portfolio, there's an entire humidor filled with, um, you know, great great cigars. So we have, um, yeah, we have cigars actually from two dollars. Are you mm. like our United pencil? All the way up oh, to yeah. 75, which is our Byron uh, 1850, the the Lyricos. So that's a nine and a half by 56, uh, you know, Perfecto. So it's a it's a massive massive cigar. But yeah, we have everything. And it, you know, when you're looking at the portfolio too, you know, if you're buying because you want something lighter or you know, where, where you know wherever your palate's taking you that day, um, you know, if you if you take a step back and think you know emotionally and you want to you know smoke something for a feel good uh, not only the gold star right because it's a great project but every single one of our united boxes has a star from a flag that ha- is either weathered or discolored you know those flags are sent to a foundation called stars for our troops mm. veterans will cut out the stars we donate back to that foundation they send us the stars we send them to the dominican and that goes into every single one of the box boxes of, of united there's a little, you know, uh, card on the back that just describes the foundation, uh, you know, who we're trying to support, which is first responders and, and veterans. And it's just a, just a thank you to bring awareness. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a feel good. One of my friends uh, who's, a, who's a vet gave me one of those, I can't remember how many years ago, but yeah, at least five years ago. And I always just, I kept it. And it was in my wallet. I had it. And one day I pulled it out and I was wondering, you know, what I could do. And I reached out to the foundation, um, asked them if they would, you know, be okay with us, you know, not only supporting them, but putting it inside of the boxes to bring awareness to them so that you can, you can even go to the foundation called stars for our troops. org. I think is the, is the website or com. but it stars for our troops. And, um, and they, they take small donations and they'll give you, it's like 50 stars in a, in a baggie. So yeah, we try to give you know give a little bit more and, and share the share the story so someone else has a little feel good uh, when they get it. And then yeah, last year was the first year, but um, you know I think we'll 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 bring it back this year where uh, for Veterans Day we uh, we put two United cigars into each box with a little yellow ribbon on the bottom. So those are complimentary in the box. So when a, a retailer purchases a box of twenty, uh, they're only paying for the eighteen. Is those two cigars that are in the box should be free to, um, you know, a veteran comes in, you give him one, and mm-hmm. another veteran comes in, you give him one. So again, it's just bringing awareness and saying thank you for allowing us to do this, uh, you know, to smoke cigars and 
you know, have this luxury of, of all this, uh, you know, freedom, if you will. Yeah, no, that's very, that's very cool. Yeah. And you brought up the pencil too. We actually went into uh, a lounge uh, in Sanford, Blend and Barrel, and yep. sitting right at the front counter, we saw the pencils and we were like, it was the first time we've ever seen uh, that specific size. Yeah, it's, it's like a really long cigarillo. Basically, cool. yeah. Super thin, like a cigarillo, but I mean, I think it's what, like uh, four inches or something like that? Yeah, that's a six, uh, I think it's six and a half by 28. Oh, wow. So it's it's a yeah. good uh, it's it's just an in between it is a long cigarette. Like, yeah, that's, that's what yeah. It is. and that's only worth the two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, yeah, it's yeah, two dollars. It's, it's pretty good. Two two fit right? Yeah, depending on the state's tax too, right? But yeah, yeah right around two dollars. But it's a 15, 20 minute smoke. Yeah, it just kind of gives you the. I don't, say, I don't even call it a fix, but sometimes you just want to, you know, something because you have. I don't know. You're waiting for you know to go into a, a meeting and you don't have a lot of time. And you're like, oh, I'll just grab a cigar. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great when you're at a lounge and you finish your cigar and you want to stay a little bit longer and you want to smoke a little bit more, but you don't know what to grab. Like that's a perfect yeah. thing to grab. Yeah, exactly. We were saying that yeah, and too, yeah. like for parties, if you have people that maybe want to try or, you know, they don't really smoke for too long, but they want to be included. It's like a good thing to hand out uh, to a big group of people or like if you're having a party at your house or something like that, because it's not quite, you know, like a cigarillo, which is essentially like a cigarette size. But right. like you said, it could go 20 minutes um, and it's not going to be overwhelming for someone that's newer or, you know, is just kind of experimenting with cigars. Uh, and of course, you know, you give it out. It's not going to be a huge problem because, you know, it's only two dollars. And I know if you buy the box, too, it's closer to like a dollar fifty or something like that per stick. Yeah. Yeah. There are, it, the box usually comes with a, well, not usually, but it, it comes with 100 pencils. Right. So, yeah, if you're buying a box from it, you'll, uh, you'll get the. Uh, yeah, that member price and discounted price. Yeah. Yeah. It's not totally worth it. Yeah. So we had the. Yeah. Say it again? No, yeah. I was going to say we have that, the pencil and natural and Maduro. Right. Mm -hmm. We had the natural. So we're going to try the Maduro next time. Um, but yeah, it's super unique. Uh, and then, real quick, uh, Jared's about halfway through his United Connecticut. So give us a little update on how that is. I think it tastes pretty good. I think it tastes pretty creamy. Obviously, I smoke usually darker cigars usually, but I really like the flavor. I could pair this well with a coffee for sure. Yeah, but, for um, the for the uh, the next morning cigar episode we did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably. And then uh, the Red Anchor. It's always good. Always. Never had a problem with it. And then this uh, Abuelo cigar is pretty unique. It's um, definitely for me. It's more earthy and nutty than most cigars. But the draw is super smooth, great smoke output. All, all the cigars are, uh, the one thing I've found that's consistent is great draw, good smoke output. And then, you know, it's just depending on what you're in the mood for, what flavors you prefer, you find that specific cigar that is more catered to you, and then you can enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that, you know, that Red Anchor, you know, when, you, when you look at the United Portfolio too, I mean, Abuelo, right, your, your grandfather, so, you know, a little bit of history there, but... Uh, Red Anchor is a, a brand that's over 250 years old. Uh, wow. That started wow. in uh, Delft, uh, Holland. And, you know, it kind of, again, when it went away, uh, the factory had burnt down. It started in, in, the factory started in 1770 and then started producing a, a cigar with a band on it. Um, you know, and again, dating back, one of the, the first cigar with a, with a band. Um, and the Red Anchor was one that we brought back for the 250th anniversary. And as we were working on this project, um, you know, we wanted to keep it with the, with the Kellner family. Uh, Henke originally, um, you know, family from, from Holland. So trying to, you know, keep it within the family. So I ended up going with, uh, with Kellner uh, over at Cape uh, Kellner Boutique Factory. And, um, you know, sitting down with that blend and uh, got the stamp of uh, approval from the, you know, the whole family. And we said, we wanted this to, you know, represent, uh, to, you know, you, the family in, in Holland and, you know, bringing it back, bringing back a brand that's, uh, that's got a tremendous amount of history. Um, you know, it's, it's one that I've been, I've been enjoying quite a bit. For sure. So, yeah. How do you guys yeah. find, um, these unique, uh, cigar brands to pick up? Uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll give, I'll give for Red Anchor, um, and Gold Star, that's, you know, David Garofalo who, um, uh, you know, celebrating 39 years in, in retail um and in the industry 
he he started creating these brands uh you know a long time ago and just kind of you know picking them up and um and then you know working closely with him on you know, he's he, he's given me uh you know a lot of freedom to kind of rework some things so you know sitting down with with him and and looking at la Giana when i first started um to say hey we need to you know she's mature now right and at the time when we we did a repackaging uh might have been like you know 25th year on the market so um you know name and named after his daughter so he created it because you know she was born he wanted a cigar to hand out created la Giana. And so after 25 years, I wanted to update the, the packaging and kind of update the blend. So to go to somebody and say, hey, I know this is your brand. Um, I know you've you've had it for 25 years, but, uh, you know, she's she's a woman now. She's, uh, you know, mature. Let's let's update her a little bit and, uh, you know, make her, uh, I don't say more presentable, but, you know, just more uh, more up to date. So, uh, you know, a lot of these these brands are. are our brands and concepts that uh, that he kind of started with and, and originated uh, back in the '90s when he when he started. So I you know, I have the fortune of kind of going through some files and I'm like, hey, what happened to this? Or or let's do let's do this. Let's reinvent this. Let's bring this back. And uh, it's been uh, it's it's it, like it's a lot of work. It's nonstop, but it's uh, it's entertaining every day for sure. Because too, it's you're basically reviving some of these brands or maybe revamping some of these brands that maybe you're able to give them, you know, more presence, let's say, um, and bring it into the market. I mean, obviously you guys have a huge operation, so you're able to put these cigars out to, you know, pretty much nationwide, um, which I think is a fantastic thing that United does, of course, incorporating, uh, like you said, whether it's with Gold Star or, you know, basically reviving history from one of the older, older families um, so it's a very unique concept because a lot of brands that you find out there, let's say like Padron, for example, it's been a very successful brand for generations and stayed in the family and a lot of other cigar brands. It's, um, you know, one company, one brand, one family, but with United, it's basically like, you know, uniting a bunch of different families yeah. together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That it kind of fits, it fits with the name and that, um, yeah, that, that's like our, our a lot of our collaborations that we do. Um, you, you know, this year, so this year the the Firecracker limited release will be the Lunatic Firecracker. Oh, so okay. Working with yeah, working with Terrence Riley on on that was uh, was a lot of fun. Last you know, last year we we released uh, a few different um, Firecrackers. Um, you know, worked with Mickey Pegg to do the St. Patrick's Day Firecracker. You know, the All Saints. Uh, that was a barber pole too. Uh, yeah. That was a Candela and, and Maduro, and then uh, working with uh, Rojas on the on the Elote Firecracker, uh, and that was really just me being a fan of street tacos. And um, I was like, you know, they 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 took the street taco name that was brilliant. I was like, uh, you know, how can I work with these guys? And you know, with the Firecracker, we released that one for uh, Cinco de Mayo with them, and you know, that's kind of their their holiday. But you know, why not you know throw some fireworks in there? No, oh, of course, so, yeah. Yeah, every, every year working with a with a new new manufacturer and new collaboration, uh, you know, we try to, you know, again, yeah, unite unite the industry the best we can, you know, and uh, it's always fun having a new project and working with new tobaccos and new factories. Are they usually um, smaller brands and smaller companies, or do you, uh, besides, obviously, you said like JFR and um, uh, all of them. Are there a lot of already well-established in bigger brands or is it usually you go for someone that's a little smaller uh that you're able to collaborate with no i, I think we've been fortunate um i think for the most part i would I, you know i i guess you would call them larger brands last year was the ep Carrillo pledge uh so that was that was phenomenal um uh, working with uh with ernesto and then um you know mike or hey mikey was out, out there you know, running the uh, running the factory, uh, incredible wealth of knowledge uh, on on Mikey, uh, who used to be, um, you know, he was he was in he was in Cuba and worked on on the on the blends out there and Cuban brands. So then he goes to the factory, works side by side with Ernesto, and so to work with the two of them, um, you know, on on that was was phenomenal. But you know, again, when we do these collaborations, especially the Firecracker, it's there's there's not a lot of tweaking. Because we want it to be a representation of their brand, so it's mm. a it's a collaboration. 
uh, right? It's our, 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 our Vitolo, the firecracker, but it's their blend. So, but there's a lot of, you know, back and forth. So, um, you know, we worked with Perdomo. I think Perdomo was the year before. And then Bandolero, um, you know, work with Nick at, at Foundation. But, you know, and not to call these companies, you know, some other companies small, because we're, we're very small. But, um, you know, Roma Craft, uh, incredibly well known, but they have a limited uh, production that they, they do every year. So, you know, in 2016, uh, I think was the uh, Cro-Magnon Firecracker. Um, you know, worked with Fratello. Uh, we did a firecracker with them with, you know, again, it's like calling these guys small. I mean, it, you know, they're, they're not, but, um, you know, it's not that we're working with, you know, the jugger, you know, the juggernauts, uh, out there, but, um, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a good mix, but we, you know, like to make sure that there's a good, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good collaboration for both sides, right? Of because course, there's, yeah. there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, you know, it has to, has to make sense for everybody. So, no, we spread the we spread the wealth. Absolutely, right, yeah. So the next firecracker is gonna be the base of firecracker. <laughs> <laughs> we got yeah this uh, yeah it's funny to do the you know this lunatic firecracker in a three and a half by fifty Vitola. Right, because it's it's kind of going against the the, the norm right. of the lunatic. Right, right. What it's known for, it's not a. Uh, is the lunatic the one with the ninety? I know they have the eight by eighty, and they have the ten by a hundred yeah. now. Yeah, the ten by a hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah, something. So yeah, I'm gonna have to put those side by side and see what that. Looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you might not even be able to see the firecracker. <laughs> no, no. I haven't had the ten by ten yet. I had the eight by eighty, and that was more than enough. So it's gonna be a, a challenge to attempt the the ten by ten uh, lunatic. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, looking looking back on it, like I've I've been I've been smoking cigars for well since uh, gosh, it's like 80, 88, 89. and I remember I was smoking like the the Partigas Robusto used to be a you know five by fifty. It was I thought that was like a big big cigar, and fifty ring gauge used to be like the considered big. Now right. when you look at a Robusto, like that's tiny. Right. Yeah, that's become yeah. more of the norm. That yeah. people will go to, but there's a lot. Yeah. There's things that are still smaller, and then there's obviously now sizes that are a lot bigger. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I usually stay within the. I'd say on, on average, right around fifty, fifty-two. Yeah. Um, because I do like our the gunner on Red Anchor is a six and a half by forty-three. I absolutely love that that size. Um, it's fantastic. So you know, I'll, I'll go a little bit lower, and then maybe fifty-six. Mm -hmm. be my my cap where I'm, where I'm comfortable but uh but you i think you're right on the um on the on the bandolero that's the that was the barbaro so that was series c the clandestinos yeah uh line but series c barbaro it's a, it's a 60 ring gauge but that one i don't i don't know if it's just comfort but it, and maybe i just enjoy the way it smokes but that one feels feels good Doesn't right feel like it's it's too big yeah exactly and that's exactly how i felt when i was smoking it uh it's still enjoyable um and two, I think, you know, it's a shorter, uh, shorter size. So that smoking time is not going to be anything crazy. Like it's not going to get two or three hours. You're still kind of averaging right. out to that hour time frame as you would with a uh, Robusto. So it's not going to be a big change up for someone that usually smokes Robustos. They'll still enjoy for around the same time, uh, get the good draw and, you know, overall enjoyment of a uh, bigger ring gauge that they might not be used to. Right. Yeah, and, and Bandolero is a great line too because it has three different series, uh, so three different blends. At Series A, has a really dark Ecuadorian wrapper, and then it uses Peruvian and uh, Nicaraguan. So it's got it's got some some kick, but um, all smaller ring gauges. And then when you go to Series C, um, you know there are four different um, four different vitolas there, and same with Series T. Uh, so and Series T uses Nicaraguan uh, Lijero, and uh, Series C uses Peruvian. Lejero, mm. um, in, in so and then obviously other other fillers, but so to distinguish the two, um, you know those would be those those are the three blends within Bandolero, so you can I mean, you, you can grab one and um, yeah you know, you'll have you'll you'll be entertained all the way through the entire portfolio of Bandolero. Absolutely, yeah. So I know there's a ton of options out there from United Cigar specifically. And I'm not going to ask you to necessarily pick favorites, but uh, 
let's say, you know, the past few months, what do you think uh, the top three cigars that you've been finding yourself uh, enjoying the most often? Like, what are some of your more go-tos recently? Yeah, uh, recently, so that Gunner, I know I touched on it uh, earlier, but that Red Anchor Gunner, um, I don't know, it just kind of kind of hits right where there's like this little extra spice timing uh is perfect and um it's been, i've been smoking a lot of those and then in this last month um that la Giana, uh 30th anniversary uh because it was you know just coming out we had that first shipment that came in uh for pca so we could you know get some of the orders out and then the next shipment came in so i've been smoking a lot of uh a lot of those and then and then the just the united um our, our core uh, united natural uh I've been smoking the Habano uh, wrapper and smoking a lot of the, the Toros just kind of kind of hit perfect for well, me where it's not, uh, you know, it's a good, it, for me, it's a good medium. Uh, and again, not overpowering, but it just, it just kind of fits any time of the day uh, for me. So yeah, those would be, those would be my three. What do you think is your most uh, underrated cigar? Our most underrated cigars are, are crazy enough is our bundle called classic. Hmm. That cigar is a three dollar cigar, smokes like a seven, eight, nine dollar cigar, comes in four different wrappers. We have Connecticut, um, Cameroon, Maduro, and then uh, Cuban, and it's it's a, just a Dominican blend uh, with with these different wrappers. But for I don't even want to say for a bundle because it takes away from it. But that that to me uh, because that you know that bundle segment is you know. I don't want to say taken over, but there are some pretty popular bundles that I'll say for retailers, that's what they, they kind of stick with because that's what they know and they don't focus on it. So they go for, oh, this is what people ask for. But if they could venture out and try something out of the norm and say, okay, well, let me try another you know, another brand, uh, classic is, is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense too because sometimes you might have, whether it's a retailer or just a consumer, they might see the price tag and think, oh, well, it's so low. It's probably not that good. Uh, but just like the classic, there's plenty of other cigars that uh, have are able to be made at a low price point and still give yeah. you great satisfaction. Yeah, 100%. Look at our, our I don't, I mean, I shouldn't say look at it because I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, our La Mezcla Cubana. That was another one where, you know, we had, the, again, an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. Like there was, just, but it was a shorter wrapper that, that it could only be used for a certain uh vitola and and our la mezcla cubana uh and i'll say half wheel because they they rate it you know their their rating system's pretty tough and uh you know they have great palates but they rated that a 90 when it first came out that's a six dollar cigar six dollar rothschild they rated it a 90 and then they just revisited it because i think maybe they were surprised that they gave it a 90 or Maybe they just wanted to go back to it, see what aging, you know, letting it rest did. And they just gave it an 89. So for a $6 <laughs> cigar to get an 89 and a 90, we're, yeah, blown away by it. So it's, yeah, it's not always, always pricing. That's going to make the cigar great, obviously. But, um, but uh, yeah, that I, I would say I'll throw that in the mix too. Underrated or La Mesa Cubana. It's fantastic. Yeah. And a great point too, because I mean, price can't always be taken into account because, uh, and when you talk about again about the Atabes and the Alfonso, uh, part of the reason why the price is going to be higher is because of the process and the <clears throat> overall cost that goes into producing just one cigar. Um, when you have the cigars that are cheaper, it's not necessarily that they're you know worse. It's just that the process is a lot easier and the cost is a lot lower, so you're able to then turn around and sell it for you know a, a much lower price. Right. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of factors that go into, um, you know, decision making for what a cigar should 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 be priced at, because I know that and, and you can kind of see it. Sometimes you, you'll taste the cigar and you can see that the process was rushed a little bit or the con, you know construction isn't really there. Um, so it's a great uh, let's just say, you know, for round numbers, it's a great ten dollar cigar, but I don't know if I would pay twenty dollars for it. Right. So there there are a lot of factors that go in and sometimes it's just priced because maybe the, the way it looks, maybe the way it, it feels. And, and that's just, you know, they, they don't have a real parameter. When we put together our kind of pricing structure, it's a business. Obviously, we want to make money, but we want to bring it to market so that it has the right value. 
um, you know, La Mezzo Cubana could have been priced uh, a little bit higher because six dollars is you know is is pretty cheap. But we thought that you know with everything all our costs factored in, you know, you're still using good tobacco, great construction. Um, let's just keep it in our, our normal normal structure. And um, and we you know brought it to market at, at a great price. And we kept the you know kept the packaging low because we knew it was a budget friendly cigar. And then you have uh, you know other cigars that are still in that same kind of you know cost structure, but you know we want to elevate the you know the the eye appeal. So like Red Anchor, yeah, there's there's a little bit more. I'm not saying it's all in packaging, but it's you know it's better tobaccos. Um, you know it's a boutique factory, uh, tobacco from from their family farms, and um, you know it just it meant a little bit a little bit more. So uh, and, it, and it smokes like it too. So. Um, so yeah, there are a lot, a lot of factors that go into, uh, into pricing. But uh, I think overall for our, our portfolio, uh, we tried, you know, try to be budget friendly. We have a lot of cigars under, under the ten dollar range. Uh, I think United Cigars, because Atabe became, you know, known as this luxury item before, um, you know, there were really, you know, a, a lot of luxury items. Um, you know, United's known for, for Atabay and then, uh, you know, some other lines, but we have, you know, a lo- majority of our portfolio is under that $10 range. Did you already tell us your uh, everyday smoke? Uh, I don't think I've said everyday smoke, but in the last month, uh, you know, what I was smoking. So, yeah, I mean, United's kind of that everyday. I wish it was Atabay, but I don't know. I don't know <laughs> how, many, uh, how many cigars are you at a day? Uh, yeah. It depends on the day. If it's if it's an office day, uh, I'm at like you know three or four a day. Nothing you know nothing outrageous, um, because I I, I I found when like when you're when you're doing work, then I can't concentrate on the cigars as much. But sometimes when I'm doing work and it it's a cigar that just kind of hits or it's something different, then I find myself thinking about the cigar more. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Like, what am I smoking? You know when. But why why have I smoked this in a while? And then I forget about the work. So I got into cigars because I enjoyed it. My you know my father smoked cigars, my family had smoked cigars, and it was it was a way to kind of relax and take away from the stress of the of, of the day. So you know I I would much rather prefer to sit down in a, in a lounge, which I don't get the opportunity to do unless I'm you know traveling or working. But even then, I'm not concentrating on. The cigar as much as the conversation and and that that plays into the experience of the cigar as well right i'm sure you guys have experienced where you're smoking a cigar and you're like that was the best cigar i've ever had and then you go back to it and you realize it wasn't that good it was you know the laughs that we had because i was with the group of guys and we were talking or it was you know i was at a dinner i was at a wedding i was at a function i was you know on the uh, on the beach you know watching a sunset and that's what made the cigar great so it's all all the environment, but um, yeah, my I, I don't I can't say I smoke a, a regular number amount per day. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right though when it comes to the experience adding to your cigar because we've had yeah you're, you're absolutely right we've had plenty of uh, times where we'll be either at a you know a, a wedding or a function we're having a lot of fun and the cigar we're smoking we associate those good feelings with the cigar. So it's like, wow, the cigar is excellent. But then you go pick it up at the lounge and then you smoke it again. You're like, something's missing. It's not quite there. Like it's not quite as great as I remember, or it might be vice versa where, you know, you're having a rough day or you're moving around a lot or you're working a lot and you smoke a cigar and it's like, Oh, that wasn't that good. But then when you do get a chance to sit down and enjoy it, you're like, okay, this is a really good cigar. I'm really yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hear that a lot when, you know, when I'm traveling and, um, you know, depending on what I have and I'm traveling with, if we're doing an event, if we're doing you know, something special, or if I have like an Atabay, if I get, like if I give somebody an Atabay or a Byron and it's a, you know, a sales associate at the shop, they're like, I'm going to save this until later. Mm-hmm. So what does that, that tell you? It tells you that they don't want to speed They don't want to set it down and forget about it, revisit it. They mm-hmm. don't want to, you know, not have the, the the ability to concentrate on the cigar they want to be away um in a comfortable chair comfortable environment uh where they're able to enjoy the cigar so uh yeah it plays a plays a big factor and in fact i was at well one time i was in the dominican at a, at a wedding 
and I'm smoking the Yaya. And I had smoked it before, and I, I loved it. And that particular night, I was just like, I didn't really like it because I was just, I mean, it was hot, humid, you know, dancing, running around, drinking. I just didn't enjoy it as much. And then I went back to it and, in, in, you know, smoking in the office even. And it's a great line um, that we do, you know, and, and we do well with it. It's just it, that particular night, it just didn't, it didn't hit me right because of the environment, because of the way I was smoking it. Um, so it, it can play, it can go both ways on that. Yeah. I think too, me personally, if it's hot outside, like if you're outside and on a hot day, the heat definitely uh, has an impact on the cigar and how it tastes. Um, a lot of times I'll either if you either if you're at the beach or you're just sitting outside and you light a cigar, sometimes it's got um, unf un unfavorable flavors, unpleasant flavors. Yeah. Um, or like if you're smoking it too fast, then obviously the cigars gonna get too hot and they might get bitter. Um, so it's unfortunate, but it happens. And then um, we've noticed a lot of retailers too. They'll get handed a specific cigar um, to sample or whatever. And like you said, they'll say, you know, I'll save this for after my shift. I don't want to smoke it now because odds are I'm going to have to relight this thing 10 times going back and forth, helping customers right. and doing all, you know, my other duties. Oh, yeah. or, or the worst, you set it down because you're like, oh yeah, let me, let me help you with that. Or, and you set it down. Next thing you know, it's on the ground because oh, yeah. it dropped yeah. it rolled off, you know, some wind passed by or somebody knocked it and, yeah, and then the cigar is gone. Um, you don't believe in the five second rule? <laughs> <laughs> not with cigars. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you drop a cigar, it's not going to smoke the same. Like, th I don't care if you drop it, like, you know, a foot or four feet. It's, right. it's, it's not going to be the same. Yeah, no, it, it, it changes it. Um, you know, and what's funny, you mentioned the beach. I don't even, I don't like smoking cigars on the, on the beach. Um, I don't know if it's just the, the air, but it usually, it's usually, there's too much wind. Um, mm -hmm. I personally don't enjoy it as much. Yeah. Well, too, that, that'll probably affect the burn if there's too much wind. Yeah. You know, yeah. you might have uh, some running on the edge or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true with, like, especially, uh, you know, I love smoking a cigar when I'm golfing because that kind of calms me down from the terrible game that I have. But <laughs> it's like you're setting it down constantly. You know, you're you're gripping on it tighter because you're, you know, I'm, I don't always set it down when I'm, uh, you know, driving. And then... Um, and then even when I'm putting, like I'm, I'm holding on to it, but then I'm like chomping on it differently. And it's, yeah, it's not, it's not the best experience, but it's a good, like, it's a good day out and, uh, and I'm enjoying a cigar. So right. For sure. Can't complain. But yeah. If you're trying to focus on your golf game, you're not realizing that you're biting the cigar too much. And then the next thing you know, <laughs> yeah, right. the, the foot is cracked or something like that. Right. Yeah. It's a stressful game. For sure. Yeah. And then you need, uh, playing, need a couple yeah, more beers to help. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough, tough day out, but it's a it's a good day out. I'm, in fact, I'm over I'm overdue now. I got to get out there. No, for sure. I mean, even yeah. uh, the the best part about golfing is you have a nice cigar, and your golf game might not be that great, but if you have that cigar and you got a couple buddies that you enjoy hanging out with, it's it's a great time. And a cart girl. And yeah, a cart girl. You need those cart girls. Need a cart girl to come around. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, you guys have you guys have the weather down there for it. For yeah. sure. It's beautiful, you know, in the winter. Yeah, January, February time <laughs> when it's nice and cool, so it's not too hot. Yeah. Once the summer hits, it's forget about it. Brutal. Yeah, I well, I lived in Vegas for 14, 14 years. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, some of those courses in the middle of the summer from like I don't know if it was like 11 to 2 or something, but they would give you a discounted rate. So I didn't care. We were in our, you know, in my twenties, thirties, and hey, let's jump out there and throw throw a wet towel on your head. You're fine. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> those are hard days to smoke a cigar on the course. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but, I know. I know. I know what it's like for Florida. Yeah, it's brutal. I mean, it's definitely different. Definitely different than Vegas out in Nevada. A different type of heat. Yeah, the, the humidity gets you for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what weighs you down for for you guys for sure. Vegas, it was like opening up an oven. So um, another question: What are some of your go to lounges when you're just hanging out? Uh, what are a couple a couple nice places to find out where you are? Oh, well, out by, out by me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So we don't have. There's not a lot. So I'm in Massachusetts. Um, 
you know, there's not there's not a ton, but there are some you know there's some good spots. You know, if I'm if I'm in Boston, um, Stanzi Cigar is just an old uh, spot in the North End uh, that's got a good good little vibe to it. It used to be a, a speakeasy, so you could go downstairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ceilings are a little bit low, so it can get a little smoky. But then they have this new back area that's a little bit a little bit better. So um, you know, walking walking down there is is always a good good spot to hit. Um, so up in up in New Hampshire, obviously you you know you got you got two guys smoke shop up there. Um, you got Twin Smoke Shop, which is which is phenomenal. They have a big you know big bar up up top. Have you guys ever been to New Hampshire? Or- yeah, I was there last yeah, year. Yeah. I went to all three of those actually. So I went to oh, Stanzi's right. first, and then uh, went to New oh, Hampshire. Really? Visited two guys, um, and then visited Twins as well. I've been to Twins yeah. a couple times. Um, they're all very unique and very. Uh, very cool cigar lounges to go to. Yeah, yeah, and, and Kurt's got a great spot with Twins. He has all the old antique signs, mm-hmm. and uh, they just recently found a, an old United sign. Mm. Uh, so he's got that up on the on the back bar, which is pretty cool. Yeah, great selection yeah, too. Their bar is their bar is crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big tequila fan too. Hmm. I say too. I don't. I don't think I mentioned. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm more tequila than than bourbon. Oh, stuff. okay. What's your go-to yeah. tequila then? Lately, it's been Casa, Casa Noble has been uh, been a big one for me. Okay, um, we it just it I've been they changed up their bottles. Um, I don't know how many, you know, however long ago, but um, but recently we started pairing it with um, Red Anchor. So we started doing events, mm. and then uh, you know Casa Noble, the representative or the national uh, representative uh, was out in Chicago. And at one of our events at the Byron Cigar Lounge, in uh, in Schaumburg, Illinois, and we just kind of connected, met, and um, and then we met again over at uh, at Biggs in downtown Chicago, and just started talking about you know the two. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of of Casanova, and you know, then showing some Instagram pictures of you know the the bottles that uh, that I've had, and and it just I don't know, I guess the relationship just kind of made sense. So we uh, we've been doing some some different tastings where they'll do a flight of uh, tequila and we'll we'll be smoking the the red anchor sometimes you know for um, higher ticketed events um, we'll play around with like an Alfonso uh, or a Byron eighteen fifty because those are aged with Spanish oak mm. and the uh, Casa Noble Reposado and the Añejo are also aged in French oak barrels so yeah. it's a good uh, it's a good pairing very nice yeah we've been trying to get into trying more tequilas and stuff like that. And I've even noticed a lot of uh, lounges are doing more events recently pairing with tequilas, um, you know, different tequila yeah. brands with their cigars. So it's definitely becoming a more popular thing in the cigar community as opposed to just, you know, cigars and whiskey. They're kind of branching yeah. out more into different, even, you know, rums, tequilas, uh, just different liquors, trying to incorporate that and pair it with a good cigar. Yeah. I hope it doesn't get too popular because then that means the prices will go up. Right. <laughs> yeah, and we've been seeing a lot of that too, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tequila's gone. Tequila's gone way up. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Casanova is kind of a go-to. Codigo, um, La Fortaleza. Uh, I drank their Blanco, the you know, for the first time the other day. Uh, I thought that was that was really good. Um, yeah, there there are a lot of good tequilas and. It's not that you have to pay a premium, but now now I find that they're around the sixty dollar range where they used to be under you know sub thirty, but you mm. can still find some good bottles around the thirty dollars per range. shot. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> not that much. No, no, no. Some of them, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah, some you can definitely shoot, but yeah, it starts to get get expensive. Yeah, uh, for sure. I have a bottle of uh, uh, Tears of L- uh, Lenora uh, that I've just been sitting on, and that's. That's a uh, it's a pricier bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, it's around right around you know two eighty three hundred. And I've just been waiting for the right moment to to open it, and we never know when that is. I actually right. open it tonight, right? But uh, but I was actually at uh, there was a taco fest in Manchester, New Hampshire, uh, just last week, and uh, we stopped into this one spot called uh, I think it's eight one eight, if I remember right, and they had uh, Tears of Lenora on the uh, on the back bar, and I was like, you know what? I got to at least just try it. Yeah. And uh, got a shot. And that was, I think it was 42, 42 for a pour. So that was, uh, yeah, that was steep, but I knew it was going to be, I knew it was going to be steep. Right. Yeah. 
we've had that yeah. same issue before where we get a we won a bottle actually at one of these giveaways uh it was a bottle of old forester 150th year and mm-hmm. thankfully they had uh some of it at the bar too so we could just get a shot and try it because we didn't want to open it up you know just kind of like you said we want to wait for that right moment or you know a good opportunity to celebrate uh but eventually a, a lot of times i find myself that moment just comes out of nowhere and you're like you know what? i'm just gonna open it you know like yeah. make a reason to celebrate yeah 100 percent. because you need that opportunity if it's you know if you're just opening it by yourself um well one it could be a dangerous night but two <laughs> you want to be able to share that experience right right so uh yeah definitely uh, open it up and, and enjoy it uh, you know that's the best way to we do that with cigars too. We open up, we open up a box, and mm-hmm. we, you know, we're enjoying a cigar. We share the the cigar. So, um, I, th- I think that you know the cigar community as a whole is a pretty generous community. For sure, yeah. A lot you of know, people know. handing out cigars. My mm-hmm. problem, yeah. similar to you know liquor, is I, I can't age cigars because every time I open that humidor, I'm like, ooh, that looks really good, <laughs> and then I end up grabbing it maybe a little earlier than I wanted to. Uh, so for me personally, it's hard to age cigars just because, you know, once you see it, you're like, Ooh, that's going to be really good. You know, I want to smoke that right. today. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, as long as you enjoy that cigar, you know, it, it doesn't need to be put away for 10, 15 years. A lot of these cigars are mm-hmm. ready to smoke right away. Yeah. Um, if you like, if you, for your preference, you can keep it for a year or two, but I mean, at the end of the day, it, as long as it's a great cigar, you can enjoy, you know, it doesn't matter when you smoke it. Yeah. Yeah, either find the moment or, or create it. Right. But um, you know, if you're if you're sitting on on a box and you know, especially especially like a limited, you know, limited editions or, or limited releases and you smoked one you loved and you're like, Oh, I wanna have this box so I can smoke it, you know, in the next few you know, next few years, five, ten, whatever years. But um but they're like you said, they're typically ready, they should be ready to smoke. Mm-hmm. So you should be able to sit down and, and enjoy it. So yeah, create create that environment so you can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. So last question, can you share anything new that might be right around the corner that we can be on the lookout for? Well, um, well, one that's, I mean, like, like I mentioned, but you, you know, you already, you guys already know it, the lunatic firecracker coming out, but, um, but working on, um, possibly expanding, um, and, and doing something with gold star. Okay. A little bit further, so you know, a little bit, a uh, little bit more with that. Because okay. working, so working closely with, um, you know, Weber Ventura, who you know has a, a long history in, uh, you know, in in the cigar business, and uh, they have some great tobacco uh, coming out of that factory out of William Ventura. Um, you know, family that's been uh, doing great things. Henderson Ventura is, you know, phenomenal too. So they just kind of, you know, that family just kind of knows knows tobacco. Um, so I want to do you know, a little bit more with, uh, with them. So there'll be some new, new things coming out, uh, here shortly. All right. Good deal. A lot of cigars that we covered a lot for you yeah. guys to check out at your local shops or online. I know that, uh, two guys cigars is one of the online retailers you could go to. Um, but be on the lookout for some of these cigars that United has put out a lot of excellent cigars that we personally en- enjoyed. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be able to find something that is, Perfect for you to smoke. But real quick before we go, I want to thank you again, Oliver, for joining us once again. It's been a pleasure. And thank uh, you guys. yeah, thank you for sharing your knowledge and everything like that. But until then, thank you guys for tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast. We'll see you next time. Take care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short-form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.